I'm going to kind of finish up on last week. Who was here last week? All right, I'm going to button that down a little bit, but I, I wanted to start by saying these lights are blinding me. Um, last night, my my daughter, um, she comes in, she wants to do devotionals. So she's always asking, can we do a devotional? Can we do a Bible study? And before you think, <clears throat> you know, I'm some righteous, holy dude, she asks me, I don't know, you know, I'm not, the one chasing her down. She just really likes it for whatever reason. She's just really easy. I have, I have two little ones and one of them, Margot, tricked me into having another one because she was so easy. <laughs> she was so perfect. I was like, this is a piece of cake. I have 50 of them. And then I had a trained terrorist come right behind her and uh, he's probably launching himself off something right now. But uh, I just wanted to say, because it was interesting, um, her, she has a little kitty Bible and devotional, and so she's reading it, and, and she's reading Psalms, and it's talking about the heavens and the earth declaring God's glory. And, and there were several scriptures talking about the stars and the moons giving praise and worship to God. And so it gave me something, you know, I don't know how God speaks to you, but for me, it's always been um, in connecting pictures. It's always been connect points for me. He, he doesn't tap me on the shoulder and, you know, say, come here, I want to talk to you. It's always been like that. In fact, my coworkers, if you talk to John or Aaron or, or Lauren or any of them, half the time, they'll say things that are really strange. And Donna's here. Um, they'll be talking and, and all of a sudden I'm gone. And they know I'm gone. You know, my, my eyes glass over. And I heard something that connected to God and I'm just gone. I, I'm there. And oftentimes they'll laugh and say things funny and want to drug test me and do all these <laughs> different things. And, it's, and I'm, I'm not trying to be rude. So last night when that was happening, it was one of those moments that connected some things to recently with what I've been hearing. And so I, I do wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about worship. I wanna talk a little bit about praise. I wanna try and connect some things so that maybe a picture can be painted for you. One of the things in the Bible that always strikes me is when it says that there is a form of godliness that denied or lacked power. And, and I've always been, really hit by that scripture. I never want to be one of those worshipers or one of those believers that lacks the power of our living God, because we should be always demonstrating the power and glory of our living God, and not just quoting scripture or having a form of godliness. Um, and so I, I want to touch on worship and praise tonight. And I want to start by finishing up last week. Throw this scripture up last week. For those that were here, I finished with this scripture and, and it's, in, it's in Genesis. And it said that Abraham raised his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And, and I went through that and I talked about you know, a now time God, that Abraham needed a now time God because his promise he was asked to give his very promise as a sacrifice. And in this scripture, God, in a tender, loving way, says, listen, here's my son, here's the lamb with a, a crown of thorns around his head provided for you. In that moment, God let Abraham know, I gave everything that's meaningful to me, my son, that you could have a promise manifest for you. And Abraham saw and heard the gospel. And we know that, you guys see this? You guys, so we know we went through that, that a ram is a lamb, right? That's grown up and the horns are on the head and the thicket are the thorns. And so we see that there was a sacrifice provided for Abraham's very promise in that moment. And so 
I want to fast forward, and, and I'm going to go back to that at the end and talk a little bit about praise and worship. Um, in Psalm 69, 34, it says, Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves in them. And go again. And Psalms 148, 3 says, Praise him, sun and moon, praise him all stars of light. I looked at the scripture of praise and worship and the Bible's filled with it, praise and worship. I want to say that the heavens and earth and the sun and the moon were day four, long before Adam. Long before you and me, praise and worship was all over creation. Good. Yeah, that is good. So, so, so because Adam fell... We've been given some gifts, right, for the equipping of us. We've been given the apostle and the prophet and the evangelist, the, the pastor and the teacher. Because that happened, there was provision made for equipping of you and me. But before all that, praise and worship was. Yeah. So there's something really powerful throughout the foundation of God and all of creation that is linked directly to praise and worship. You may like this here, me preaching, or Pastor Dan, and that was great. This was, it was so good Sunday. It was that just phenomenal? I've been feasting on Dan's word lately, but you may like that, but long before this, praise and worship was in the groove throughout creation and meant a lot to God. Long before we came up and got mics or did anything, praise and worship was going on. You guys following me? So I'm glad if you like this right here, and I, I do happen to like this. I love to hear other people talk. But there's something foundational and powerful in praise and worship that I'm here to tell you tonight, you don't need me for. Yeah. Go ahead. I call you go ahead back there or go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Donnie. I love you. <sighs> Mark 24, 25. He was saying to them, take care of what you listen to. By your understand, a measure it will be measured to you and more will be given you besides. For whoever has to him more shall be given and whoever does not have even what he shall be taken away from him. Go ahead. To Luke. Luke 8, 18. So take care how you listen. For whoever has to him more shall be given and whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has shall be taken away from him. I, I want you to notice that as Jesus is explaining the, the parables and he's saying, and we've been looking at the seed and we've been looking at the heart, that the seed goes into the heart. That's the ground that needs to be prepared just right for that seed to bear fruit. And if it's not right, birds of the air will snatch it. The evil one will take away. And, and I want you to know that as Jesus is going through all of this, he says, take heed how you listen. Not what you listen. See, sometimes we think it's all about what we hear, but he said there's something different here. You better take heed how you listen. Because how you listen is going to determine whether I give or take. How you listen is going to determine give and take. What do you think God likes to give most? This isn't a trick question. I came to bring what? Love and life and life in abundance. So everything he's talking about is I want to give you more, but you better take heed how you listen. I know sometimes it seems like this is old time confusing stuff, but um, you can look at the political arena today or any kind of right, left, uh, any kind of ideology, and you can hear something said and one group of people hear it one way, another people hear it another way, right? And I'm not making a stance. I could care less about politics or any of that. I, I've, I've got my king and I'm, I'm pretty sealed in what I believe in and what I think the world needs. But I, I watch in amazement how something is said and really intelligent, articulate, smart people get completely different messages. Take heed how you listen. 
Go, go to the, where are we at next? Are we at numbers? <clears throat> so we know a lot about, so at, there's a promise given, right? And, and I just want to give you a little background. We're going to read this and I'm going to, I'm going to back into this for a minute because it's important and we're going to finish with this and that scripture in Genesis um, because I'm going to tie it in. I really am to worship, praise and worship. They told him and said, we went into the land where you sent us and it certainly does flow with milk and honey and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong. And the cities are fortified and very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of the Anak there. They're, these are like giants and big people, strong. And, and Amalek is living in the land of the, uh, and I, I'm just going to butcher words, and God likes how I do that. And you have the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites. They're all living in the hill country, and the Canaanites are living by the sea in the side of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses. And he said, we shall by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will surely overcome. But the men who had gone up with him said, we're not able to go up against the people for they are too strong for us. Go ahead. So they gave out to the sons of Israel a bad report of the land. They didn't give out a lie. They didn't lie. They just gave a bad report, which they had spied out saying, the land through which we have gone in spying in and out is the land that devours its inhabitants and all the people who we saw in it are men of great size. There are also, we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anarch are part of the Nephilim and we became like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight. <clears throat> this is the promised land. So I want you to know that 12 leaders selected holy men, brilliant men, courageous men, men of faith, loved by God. The leaders were sent into the promised land. And they had conflicting reports. Some bad, some not so bad. Does anyone have any idea how long it was after this before Caleb got his mountain? It was 45 years. Yeah, 40 is the number of what, preparation? Five is the number of grace. Through preparation and grace, Caleb got the promise. Listen, Caleb never complained about it. He didn't say for 40 of those years, I told you so, you guys stink. I hate you, we should have done this. Caleb, he never did that. But he knew it was a bad report. He knew what he knew for a reason. Take heed how you listen. Go to the next scripture. <clears throat> This is one of my favorite scriptures. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the vision of the soul and spirit, both joints and marrow, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of what? The heart. I want you to know this translation in Greek is a little bit different because the two-edged sword is the word in Greek, dystomos. Dystomos literally is a, a two-mouthed river. So he's saying there's there's... There's two mouths and one river. And when they come together, both sides are equally powerful and sharp and they can go all the way to the heart. See, when the one mouth and the other mouth come together, both sides become one and equal. So when God's word and your word come together, they form living water. They form a double-edged sword. They form a two-mouth river. You guys follow me? Is this all right? Yes. Why is that important? Because Jesus said, take heed how you hear. I don't know what your promise is, but chances are really good you have 10 out of 12 giving you a bad report. 
Chances are really good leaders and, and, and brilliant people and, and all these people that you looked up to that were selected are giving you wrong reports. Yeah, you can't get that job. Who do you think you are to even think that you deserve a job like that? Don't you remember what you did over here? And you'll never get your kids back. Don't you remember over here? And, and so we have these leaders that have these reports that oftentimes are bad reports. Not lies, just bad reports. They're not lining up with God's report. They're not lining up with the diastomos. They're not two mouths coming together. And I'm going to just give this away because I, I don't want to... I don't want to belabor this because I think it's important because I really would like to spend maybe the next week or the week after praising and worshiping and praying to God because I want to activate the power and demonstrate the power of the living God and not just have a form of godly list, not just run around memorizing a couple bumper sticker scriptures uh, without hearing and taking hear, heed. Okay, I, I, I know that it's a popular thing sometimes to, to gather around these places right here with big microphones and big audiences with big, beautiful uh, performances. And, and I know that that's a powerful thing, but long before that was, praise and worship was glorifying God in power, spirit, and truth. And so I want to just get back to a mindset where not only can we take heed of what we hear, but we're certain of that, and we come into diastomos. We become a two-edged sword. We become the mouth of God with the river, the living water. And it literally is a double-mouthed river becoming one. And that's who we are. <clears throat> Go ahead. So Genesis 22, 5, right before I started with that scripture, right before he looked up and God said, turn around, and he saw the lamb with the crown of thorns in place for his promise to live. Right before that, we have Genesis 22, 5. Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. And I and the lad will go over there and we will worship and return to you. I want you to know that the mouth of God that joined with his told him in worship that him and his son, the promise, were coming back. And it was in worship, and so we're going to ask ourselves, what is this worship thing? And this isn't some, you know, complicated science project. It's offering myself up to God as I am so he can tell me who I am. That is all worship is. There's nothing complicated. It's raising our hand. In fact, when you go and see who entered into the promise, we see that Caleb from the tribe of Judah and Hosha, Joshua from the tribe of Ephraim. I think that's how you pronounce it. Judah means praise. Caleb means bold dog, tenacious. Tenacious praise. The other one that went into the promised land with bold, tenacious praise was salvation. Ephraim means double fruit of salvation. So in the spirit, I just want you to see 45 years later, 40 years in the promise was led by bold praise and a double fruit of salvation. Yeah. Is that all right? We complicate things and we think that we have to do something to access the power of God. But when we offer ourselves to God, when we throw our hands up or we lay down or we cry out and we offer ourselves 
as we are, he begins to speak into who you are. And you're going to want to listen to 10 other people, leaders. They don't have the same report that God has for you. They have a bad report. And they're not bad people, and they're not lying. They didn't say any of that. Just said it was a bad report because it wasn't the report of God. See, Caleb knew what he knew because the report was true. In fact, in Joshua later, when he goes up there, he says this, 45 years later, I'm as strong and able as I was then. Because of Dystomos. Because his word and my word are one. And it's able to pierce and divide, separate, and go to the very heart where the seed, the word, the living God is bearing fruit. So I just encourage everyone tonight, myself included, to maybe maybe just put aside a lot of the reports that we've heard on the promises that we've talked about or thought about or dreamed about, some of the promises that maybe be, that are sitting kind of on a dusty shelf somewhere that maybe we heard 40 years ago or 45 years ago, that through the preparation and grace of our living God, the promise is right before us. If his word and our word will come together. And we do that by fully submitting and offering our, ourselves to him as we are, so he can speak into who we are. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, and we just ask that, Lord, like Paul prayed in Ephesians, that you would open our eyes and ears, that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. We would fully be taught of you and understand you, that we would take heed how we listen, that we would listen to the, to the mouth and the river of living life and take no other report that we would worship and praise day and night, that we would offer ourselves fully to you, God, as we are, hurting today or happy today, broken today or healed today, as we are, so that you could speak to who we are, that we would become one with you and demonstrate the promise and power of the living God. Father God, we just thank you. Bless your people tonight as they go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.